You know, some people have found a new strategy to increase productivity. It's called body doubling, but what is it? How does it work? Dr. Andrew Kahn is a licensed psychologist and associate director of behavior change and expertise at understood.org. Joining us live to break it all down for us. Welcome to Houston's morning show. What on earth is body doubling in real life? I only thought it happened in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, so the, the phrase body doubling is something, it's sort of a new term, but the, the concept of this has been around for decades. So as somebody myself with ADHD, um, body doubling is something that I've used. It's a strategy where a person has someone situated near them where they're trying to do a task or trying to focus on completing an activity that might be challenging for them. So for folks who struggle with focus or attention, who, who don't have the ability to stop and start tasks quite easily, Body doubling is there to provide sort of a physical presence that helps someone feel more motivated and engaged in tasks. It doesn't always have a form of interaction engaged in it, but for some folks who might use it in school, a teacher can provide a motivating cue, but generally speaking, it's about having someone nearby who's there to just sort of provide sort of an anchor for your attention. So what exactly is the theory here? Why, why does having someone around boost your productivity and your focus? That's a great question. You know, there are, currently there really aren't any controlled studies about this. Some of the theory is that folks respond to having the social pressure of people nearby. You know, in this post-pandemic era, so many of us, including myself, were in a situation where we were suddenly thrust into an environment where we're working by ourselves. But in working in a setting where there are other people nearby, they can add additional stimulation to the environment. And for folks with ADHD, sometimes their brains actually don't have enough stimulation. So they're distracted by little changes in their environment. So by being in a situation where there's more stimulation, there are people doing things that act as a social model, it puts sort of some cognitive pressure on the folks to be engaged and focused. So that's some of the idea around this, and it might give people a little bit more of that motivation and navigate the stimulation for them. It sounds like a lot of good can come out of it, but I'm just wondering if there are any drawbacks to it. Could it become a distraction, for instance? So for many folks, you know, to use body doubling well requires you to really focus on what you're trying to get out of it. So for a lot of folks, you know, if you pick a friend who's social, who wants to chat with you and wants to just engage, that's not really going to work for you. So the downside of body doubling is really trying to be careful about how you utilize it, where you utilize it, and really being attentive to the idea that, you know, you have to have a little bit of a system in mind. So I give people some tips. Body doubling can require some trial and error. So pick somebody to be near who is going to be working and engaged. Second, be open to the idea of setting a timer for yourself. Check in to say, hey, am I really getting something out of this in the last 10 minutes when your timer goes off? Mm -hmm. Finally, really being compassionate to yourself when something isn't working. That isn't a sign that it's not a great strategy. It just means things may work for you in one moment and not might, may not work for you in the next. So those are really important things to think about when using body double. Now, what are some other options to become more productive if you don't have a body double? So one of the great things with body doubling is it doesn't necessarily require you to have someone in the room. Currently, lots of folks are forming groups on social media where they have body doubles who will share a screen with you or jump on a FaceTime with someone. So having the opportunity to use virtual technologies to keep you nearby can be really super helpful and learning how to use strategies that help you organize and take care of yourself. So for example, us at understood.org, we use a lot of strategies and share with folks to understand what they need for attention and focus, and then connecting them with some of those strategies through the virtual world and through strategies that they learn about themselves. Well, very intriguing, yes. that is for sure. Thanks for taking time to walk us through it and figuring out I need a body double right now. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Thanks again.